Welcome to Proven. On this episode, we are talking about proven effective communications that Expedition Overland has gone through uh, in our 10 years, almost 10 years of operating in the field. <clears throat> so let's start off with the number one go-to communications um, radio in the world, and that is this, at least here in the United States, and that is the CB radio. Now, the CB radio works fine for quick trail runs, you and your buddy, when you're three feet from each other, okay? I, representing my CB radio right here, since I don't have one, is this cardboard box, and I do genuinely think a CB radio is about as effective as a cardboard box. So, let's talk about something that actually really has uh, potential in an overland environment. Now, in general, I believe in a multi-leveled communication system. Cell phone, radio, in-reach, or satellite communication, satellite phone. I believe that all of those have a place. Now, depending on the situation and the trip and what you're doing, not all of that is required. A minimum, have a cell phone. Secondary, if you're just going out and needing to communicate with friends, uh, a GMRS radio or an FRS radio, like a Motorola talk about, or equivalent, something like this, it would be the next thing that, we, that I'd have. And we've used these in the past. We started out on these things. And then we went to this and that, and we kind of came back to using handhelds for a while uh, of, of this variety. This is a Midland radio. They've got a lot of stuff going out there right now when it comes to a push into the overlanding market. It's kind of cool. Uh, but if you want to go beyond that, I mean, these are consumer. They're, that's nice. They're cheap. They're effective. But if you want something nicer, you got to start migrating your way up the, the chain. Now, this is the radio. It's a Vertex. We got from, I think, ruggedradios.com back in the day. Uh, we had them program them for us. They're GMRS radios. And these were phenomenal. They had really good charge bases. They would hold up to all the rigorous you know, off-roading when they were sitting on the, their chargers. I loved these radios. Super simple, one through 16 channels, I believe. Yep, one through 16, super clear, really tough. I would highly recommend a radio just like this. Now, if you wanna go up in features, from the GMRS and FRS side, and we'll put links down below to understand what GMRS and FRS is. We're all overlanders, we can do some more education, you can go read about that. Uh, next would be uh, the Garmin Rhinos. Now I've carried Rhinos for almost 10 years. They are incredibly handy. They have the ability to talk Rhino to Rhino and transmit locations as you talk. You can also uh, ping another rhino and find out where that location is. So that's pretty handy, really nice. And it talks on the GMRS and FRS channels. So if you have a base or other people that have other types of GMRS or FRS radios, they all talk. But if you have a rhino and another rhino, they talk specifically to each other and transmit each other's locations, which is pretty cool on the GPS unit. So this is a great feature to have when someone's going to go and leave camp, they're going for a day hike, or they're going into town, and you guys are going to be split up. Pretty handy. Check those guys out. The Garmin Rhino. Now, GMRS does require a license, a family license. We have one here at Expedition Overland, or my family, the Crofts, do. And uh, it's easy. You just pay for it. These are a great way to get into radios. They're five watts, two, uh, you know, like a half a watt to two watts, and then if you get up to some of the nicer ones, they'll transmit at a full five watts. Now, GMRS radios also come in a mobile device. Uh, this one is also, we got it from ruggedradios.com, has a 40 watt radio. It just puts more power out there. Now, another thing to consider, and back on my CB rant, is if you're going to put a CB in, it takes just as much work to put a CB in as it does a GMRS radio. It's the same process. The head unit, the main body in the head unit, an antenna cable, a power cable, and an antenna. 
and an antenna mount. That's what you need to put a radio into a truck. Same with a CB. So if I'm going to spend the money, these are pretty equivalent. You can find the equivalent of a CB in this. And these work so much better. 40 watts versus the 5 watt max on a CB radio. Check GMRS radios out. Now, if you're willing and able to make the leap, you would cross the line to 2 meter radio, HAM. HAM comes with its own set of uh, restrictions. You need a license. There's varying degree of license, but your general uh, technician license is fairly easy to get. I was able to study for mine in a couple weeks, go in, take a $15 pat, uh, test at the time, and I walked out of there uh, with a call sign. We have, uh, here at Expedition Overland, migrated mostly to the two meter radios because we're trying to push the limits on our communications. Our head units are capable of transmitting telemetry, our data, GPS, heading, speed, altitude, things that have come into play, especially in this last year as we've been flying and driving at the same time. As we talk and communicate between the two of them, and these two radios in particular with D-Star, we're able to update our positions and see everybody's telemetry on the head units. There's these cheapy Bofangs. Um, they're kind of controversial anymore. We've, we ran them for a little while. Frankly, they're not worth my time. We don't buy these anymore. They just break. Uh, for the average uh, user, something like this in the price range of like $35 to $45, something like that on Amazon, uh, this gets you in the game. But if you're going to be operating on one of these, you need to have a license. These two are up between half, half a watt and five watts of power, so they say. Let's just say it that way. Uh, you can also get into programmable radios in uh, two meter, which is pretty handy. You can set up your own programming stuff, but you have to have software and cables. And typically you need to go find a buddy who's really good at this stuff to get this programmed. Same with this version. However, on the GMRS side, we used rugged radios and just asked them to program it from the website and it came to us programmed. And then we never touched them again. And these two were programmed together, so they always talk. It's a good solution. Looking at this lineup, it's the cheapest to the most expensive that we have. Cheapest is the Bofang. Uh, the next, this was about a, I don't know, about $100, $150 radio. I don't, it, the, the name of this isn't even on, it's, on it. It's the equivalent of, say, like an any tone or something like that. And then we went this year uh, to the full Icon ID 5100s, or excuse me, ID 51. This is the 5100A head unit. So these two are brother and sister. Whatever you do, I would highly recommend a base unit in your truck for 40 to 50 watts. More power, more reach, more distance, more clarity. It's really good. And if you can have multiple trucks with these, all the better. If you're going to run a head unit, you need to have a handheld radio. Why? Because it, you'll inevitably end up buying one. You could either go with one of these or whatever. But you're going to be coordinating between, say, a spotter and the driver. Uh, have someone run out and get something, come back. You're sitting in the truck. They're just really nice to have in tandem. They go hand in hand together. Mobile to mobile is great for truck to truck either in GMRS or in uh, two meter, we use that constantly. And I can tell you when it comes to the safety of convoys and working together in traffic, which frankly, driving is probably the most dangerous thing we overlanders do on a given day. These, I can attest, have saved multiple accidents over the years uh, from traveling from Alaska to Argentina. These are critical pieces of kit. Wherever you fall on the line, make sure that you get one. I just say you should have one. You should learn to operate a radio, learn how to speak on a radio, and learn how to effectively talk between groups with a radio. Let's talk about more, a little more about two-meter radios. Why do we like to use them? Two-meter radios in the ham world have a wide range of repeaters throughout the country and the world. If you know an area that you're going to be operating in, you can look at a repeater site, 
dial in the repeater site and be able to talk to, for hundreds of miles sometimes. I think my longest is 200 miles uh, from one vehicle to another vehicle through a repeater site. That's incredible power at your fingertips if you know how to use it. There are some GMRS uh, repeaters out there, but they're kind of few and far between, and I never personally have gotten into researching that too much because I knew that I wanted to go to the ham meter, uh, <coughs> ham two meter side. Digital has its advantages over analog. It's typically really, really clear until it's not. It falls off. Analog, you can hear, may the, the audio quality may not be as good as it could be through digital, but you can hear it further because it's not having to send a digital packet inside the radio transmission that de is decoded. It is a straight analog signal that you're hearing and you can turn the squelch all the way off through the, and listen through the fuzz and hear somebody way out there if you have to. So what we have done in our trucks is that if we're separate from each other and we need to keep track of each other, we run on digital. If we're running throughout the day and uh, it's car to car, a lot of times we'll run on analog. If we're using pilots in the air and trucks on the ground, we'll run digital for the teams that are in the air because we're transmitting digital packets and their telemetry, heading, speed, altitude, distance from this unit, etc. And we will use the analog for the ground to ground communications. There's a lot of options that come with that stuff. It comes at a price. We've invested heavily to get this technology. And uh, for the most part, it has worked. It is technology. So that is my two cents on what has worked for us. Proven systems, pick out what works for you. And uh, we'll see you next time on Proven. Rufio, do you have a copy? Rufio's got Samson. Samson, do you have Rufio? Rufio, do you have X3? Rufio's got X3, Samson. Yeah, copy that. Successful. Clay and Kurt have Rufio. Clay and Kurt have Rufio. We still don't have Samson. Samson, do you have Kurt? Samson has Kurt. Uh, do you have Samson, Kurt? Kurt has Samson. Nate, with uh, the blue radio, do you got Rufio X3 and Samson? Alpha, Bravo, got Rufio Samson with X3 inside of Samson and the door, door to Corvette is Levanta open.